When I was starting out in this business, I was always worried about how to light. How do these great DPs and great cinematographers achieve such things? I mean, such amazing imagery. It wasn't just lighting, it was a framing, the composition. And over the years, you start, you know, getting the knowledge, you start getting better, and it's something you never stop learning. But one of the things that I discovered pretty early on is like lighting sometimes is, is just, when it comes to lighting, you follow logic. Uh, for example, if the room only has one window and it's nighttime and a person is sleeping, where do you think the light's going to come from? From the window. Same deal with a living room. If you have a living room with like uh, three windows, for example, and it's supposed to take place at noon uh, or at three o'clock in the afternoon, where's the light going to come from? From the three windows. So a lot of things in lighting involve just logic. Sometimes when we're dealing with like more fantasy films or more like uh, action-oriented films, we enhance that that reality basically but we're always looking for reality we're always looking for like how things will look like in real life if i'm standing here in a living room for example in a living room set or in a kitchen and the screenplay says is at four o'clock in the afternoon think how would the kitchen look like at three or four o'clock in the afternoon so that's why for the eps and directors and let me say this very clearly this involves directors too because a lot of people here especially young and up-and-coming filmmakers you still tend to think that the DP only deals with lighting and framing and blocking and exploration of the scene. And the director just kind of says action for some reason. I mean, the director needs to be aware of lenses. The director needs to understand and know how to explore a scene, how to block a scene. First of all, when you see a movie, when you see your favorite actor, what do you see? You see the key light, the main light, that's landing on the actor's face. It could be coming away from the side at 45 degrees, frontal, from the back. And obviously, the direction of the light is going to determine the mood, even the style of director a lot of times. If it's coming very frontally, for example, it's going to look a little flat. It might look like, you know, deers in a headlight. If it's coming 45 degrees, it might be kind of acceptable. I mean, the important thing to understand here is like, the closer the light is to the camera, the flatter the actor's going to look. And that might be an effect you're looking for, that's fine. Uh, but understand that. Again, logic. If it's coming from where the camera is, I'm going to look flat. Now, if it's coming from the side, it's going to create a shadow area on the other side of the face. Very dramatic, you know, horror film, dramatics. If it's coming from behind the face, behind the head, more like a backlight. Obviously, it's going to look like more like a witness protection program, or, or it could be like, a, a, again, another type of moody piece. It's important for directors and DPs to practice with this. And you can use ordinary lights, like ordinary hardware lights, hardware store lights. So we have a key light, which illuminates the talent. This is the light with, that's going to be used to basically show the, the actor to the audience. Then you have the backlight. The backlight is utilized to separate the talent from the background. For example, the background right now that I have behind me here is brown. So obviously, if I had brown hair, I'm going to blend with the background. So I need to have a little backlight that can separate me a little bit. Fill light. You can have no fill light and fill light. If you have a little bit, then suddenly, slowly it starts becoming less and less contrasty. That takes us to the concept of contrast ratio, which will be spoken in another episode. Mm -hmm.